Hi, this is Richard, and welcome to another episode of Making Something from Nothing. In today's video, we're going to be finishing up these trailer components so my customer could bring all this stuff down to Cuba and weld it up and make a trailer axle for his uncle, I believe it is. So what I need to do with this 3-inch diameter stock is go ahead and center drill it, put in a live center, part it off, and go ahead and bore each one of these bushings out to one and a quarter to accept the spindles so the customer can weld them in. Now in order to make two bushings that are two and three quarter inches long, I've got to get this little lathe, uh, an Atlas 12 by 36, to part off a three inch piece of steel. I don't know if it's going to do it, but we're going to give it the college tries to stick around here. So the first order of business is to go ahead and center drill this so we could break out the cutoff tool and see if we could do it. Now I've already got this piece indicated in uh, to within about maybe a thou or so at the end of the six inch piece. So let's get this thing drilled. So I had just purchased these uh, new cutoff blades, uh, four and a half inches long, because I need to dive into this uh, steel piece about an inch and a half to go ahead and part it off. So I figured I'd put a nice brand new grind on it and hone it down to a razor's edge, because I'm going to need all the help I can get cutting through a three inch piece of steel on this lathe. So I'm going to go ahead and set this tool perfectly on center height so I can have a fighting chance at parting off this 3 inch piece of steel here. Well, since I have a wooden shop and the lathe is not bolted down to the wooden floor because it wouldn't do any good anyway, I'm off to the steel supplier to have them cut it down. These guys know me and they're going to hook me up, so let's go. Okay, well since parting this off on the lathe wasn't happening, uh, I went ahead and had it cut. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up uh, these two sides and we're going to pop holes in these two bushings one and a quarter inch, maybe a couple thou more to fit the spindle. So let's get on it. Wasted enough time already. Thank you. 
Well, I was kind of surprised that the cut on the, you know, multi-thousand dollar bandsaw wasn't a little bit straighter. I had to take off more than I wanted. Well, we were shooting for a length of two and three quarter inches on this. That was not set in stone, so we ended up at two and five eighths. It'll be just fine. So time to move on to drilling while we have it in the chuck. So I take my largest uh, center drill and give me a nice starter hole for the half inch drill. Now this is 1018 cold rolled steel and it's drilling real smooth. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pop this half inch drill through it, come back with a one inch drill and go ahead and bore it out to the finished size which is just a little bit more than one and a quarter. Well, after all the trouble I had trying to cut this thing in half, I'm glad the drilling's going well. This is a one inch bit, approximately 25 millimeter for our friends across the pond. And it's going through this metal like it was butter. So I'm very pleased about that. Well, the first one went off without a hitch, so time to move on to the second one and do a repeat. Now I know all you machinists out there are going to say, hey, that piece of work is running out. You're right, I didn't indicate it before I drilled it, because I'm going to drill it a half inch, and then I'm going to drill it one inch, and then I'm going to go ahead and indicate the work in before I do the bore. And if you didn't catch it in the last clip of the work running out, you should really see it in this little zoomed in uh, section right here. And again, this little bit of run out is not going to matter as long as I indicate the work in properly before I do the bore. So after two and three quarter inches, we finally punched through and time to move on to the bigger bit. Now this one inch bit is one of the bits that uh, Harry had given me in the last video. Uh, so go check that out. Well, at this point in the job, the drilling is going so easy, I just want to go out and buy some more stock and slap it in the chuck and drill some more holes, you know what I mean? But uh, now I'm real happy, everything's going smooth, and we're fixing to move on to the boring here in just a moment. Now this one inch bit that you see cut in here was donated to the channel. If you caught my last video, you'll know about it. But uh, Harry, these things are working great. Thank you so much, sir. Well, now that the drilling's done, now I could go ahead and indicate this thing in so we can cut the bore concentric with the outside diameter. Well, aside from the pressure that I'm putting on the chuck as I'm pulling it around, I've got these bushings running within a couple of tenths. So we're good to go to bore these out. Well, here I'm fixing to get the lathe ready to go ahead and do the boring on these uh, two bushings. And I just wanted to apologize for the shakiness of the camera. Uh, I'm working on some new things 
to get some better angles uh, for work around the lathe and me knocking around the lathe is knocking around the camera so I plan on working on that to where we get some non shaky video and the last thing to do is make sure we have clearance for the boring bar it's not going to crash into something so let's get to boring as the boring bar goes in I put my hand over on the compound so I could feel the vibration so this way I know when the boring bar has left the inside of my piece here because I'm pretty close to the work so here I'm doing a quick check with the uh, telescoping gauges so this way I know exactly where I'm at and how much to dial in well I have to admit this boring bar I didn't pay a whole lot of money for it and it's doing a heck of a job so I couldn't be happier with it well here I'm looking for about one inch and two hundred and fifty five thousandths and I've got about ninety to go Well, I was just shy by about two or three thousand, so uh, a spring pass should take care of it. That spindle should slide right in. I've already got the other one done, and this will pretty much wrap up the job here. My guess is it's going to go right in. Beautiful. Go ahead and chamfer this inside corner. So I just went ahead and flipped the piece around. Now we're going to chamfer the other inside edge. And that pretty much wraps up the work on this second piece right here. So. Let's take it over to the bench and we'll take a look at it. Okay, well that pretty much wraps up the job here, so let me give you a rundown on what's going on with these guys. These spindles here are going to slide right inside of these bushings I just made. they're going to be welded approximately right there then after it's welded this is going to be inserted into a three inch inside diameter axle and then this entire setup welded to the axle I've given the customer a chamfer here pretty deep to go ahead and run weld bead to this guy here I've done the same thing on the bushing for when they weld it into the axle and I've chamfered the other side again for a weld bead here and this one just to assist in banging it down into the axle so we're not up against a hard edge so I hope you guys enjoyed the project it was a fun little project to do had to buy some new tooling uh, to get it accomplished, but uh, that's the nice thing about jobs. It pays for the tooling that you need down the road. So thanks again for watching, and go out in the shop and make something from nothing. <laughs>